whether we like it or not, the truth is this. Today, in the African continent, we have one of the most unstable monetary policy. Last time, we tried our best to say, let us attempt to analyze physical and monetary policy and look at how we can bring the two together to support the good intention of government. I will give you an example, Mr. President. Last week, Central Bank came out with a policy. And that's why I keep on frowning. Now, if we allow individuals to sit down in their rooms or within the comfort of their office to churn out policy for, for, for the nation, we are in trouble. That's why we have a parliament. And in, on issue of this nature, I expected the Central Bank of Nigeria to approach the parliament and say, this is what we intend to do, this is what we, we, uh, the, the result, and, this, and then we can advise. We can advise. I will give you an example, sir. Last week, the latest of the policies of the central bank was that you cannot withdraw, no, you cannot transfer from your domiciliary account, you know, to a third party. I will tell you the immediate consequence. We have told Nigerians, and it's our law, that no company in Nigeria can charge in foreign currency. Mr. President, everyone who travels here buys airline ticket in Naira. Now, if you look at the prohibited uh, list of the same central bank, these are classes of people that cannot buy forex from central bank. And then they have you do the change where you can go and buy. So what it means is that even if you want to buy spare parts, you cannot send money to buy spare parts. That's what it is. The same central bank is saying you cannot transfer more than 10,000. I don't know the wisdom in that. Mr. President, if you have a component part for an aircraft, for example, that costs 100,000, that, that we call AOG, aircraft on ground. So it will take you 10 weeks to be able to transfer $100,000 for the purpose of buying that component. This is, is, is ridiculous. And with this new policy, you can't even do it. That's what it means, sir. So the consequence of that is that we have a policy decision that indirectly want to take out of business a, 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 a lot of services that are being rendered to Nigerians. Mr. President, we must take this matter seriously. My, my worry, my, why I'm disturbed is that while government is thinking along the line of making things easy for the people, people who serve in the same government are coming out with policies based on personal interest to frustrate the action of government. I have not found, I have tried my best to find why should anybody in his right sense come, come out with this kind of policies. Doesn't he know the consequences? Can't he analyze in which world is he living? I, I don't understand. So when I had it, it sounds rhapsodic enough for me to go back to my bed and say something is definitely wrong. Mr. President, 80% of decisions of people in government are taken based on personal interest, and this we must reverse. And the only institution that is capable of reversing it is the parliament. And I think that under your guidance, we must take decisive action to ensure that policies of this nature are tabled before the parliament before they can be shown out to the public. It's very, very sad, Mr. President. Thank you very much.